For the longest time, the most attractive computer to me was the 2013 Mac Pro. And I, ever since the new Mac Pros came out, I've been keeping an eye on how cheap these things have gotten. And I'm gonna go get one tonight. I am getting the cheapest Mac Pro that you've ever seen, probably. <laughs> So here's a listing right here for the Mac Pro. It's listed for $500 and it comes with an LED cinema display, uh, 27 inch. I talked the guy down a little bit. I offered him 400 cash because you flash some cash and people, you know, people want to, people want the money if you want cash. So I'm getting the whole kit and caboodle for 400 bucks. That monitor is every day worth 100 or 150 bucks, which brings my total purchase price of the Mac Pro down to 250 bucks, which is without a doubt the cheapest Mac Pro that has probably ever been purchased and add another $35 for the 12 core upgrade I'm going to do in a later video. Under 300 bucks, 12 core Mac Pro, 16 gigs of RAM. That isn't half bad, but it's a 10 year old computer. So <laughs> we'll see how bad it is. It's been a long time since we've done. It's been a long time since we've done this. I am so excited to pick up this computer. I forgot my AirPods. So I just pulled in and I think the guy is pulling up now. So I will see you after I get the computer. How's it going? Good, man, how are you? Good, all right, sweet. Here's the um, 400, right? There you go. Thank you. Yep, got the monitor right here. And let me grab the computer computer right here in all of its beautiful glory. This thing is so pretty. Hopefully everything works. And never, never doubt the automatic door minivan. We made it home safe and sound all in one piece. All right, let's turn it on for the first time. Okay, it's lighting up, that's good. That's also good. That's a very positive sign. I'm gonna get all this thing set up and then we can see just how capable this thing still is. So I ran a Geekbench test on it just to sort of see where we're at. And it's a little pathetic. The 2849 is a multi-core score and then 800 is a single core score. I mean, obviously the four core variant of this computer is not is not what anybody would buy. They're buying this to upgrade it. So all that footage was shot last night and I've had some time to set this up, mess around on it, and I have some initial and thoughts about it. But I just wanted to talk about this computer a little bit. I am going to upgrade this. I have the 12 core CPU and the eGPU. It's at my house. I'm going to do it in the next video, so stay tuned for that. I didn't mean to wait, that was like involuntary, but that kind of worked out. Um, that, was like a, that was like a left right blink. Anyways, I, uh, I, I'm really excited to upgrade this thing and because using it now, it's just, it just isn't it. it. It's just, it's not good enough. I mean, that's just the reality. I'm using currently that I'm going to base my opinion off of. I have a Ryzen 7 3700X. That's the CPU I'm comparing. And then I think I have an RTX 2070 inside of my computer. I've sort of switched it around recently. I think it's 2070 though. Um, either way, very powerful computer, edits 4K video very easily. Every video that you've seen in the last two years has been edited on that computer. So this computer right here, I wanted to talk about what it is. It is gorgeous. It is, <laughs> it's the best looking computer that's ever been invented without a doubt. I don't think there's any question about that. But I wanted to talk about what Apple did with this computer and why I think people got so mad at it, but also why I think it probably didn't do as well as it should have done. And the biggest thing was is that Apple, what they were trying to do was create art in a computer form. Now, a cylinder, and this isn't art, this isn't the Sistine Chapel. I mean, this is modern art, but modern art isn't really art. Um, but it it is it has a subtle elegance and beauty to it that I think we can all appreciate. The matching black PCBs all the way across. I mean, this is, this is without a doubt the most attractive computer that's ever been built. The problem was the target audience wasn't it wasn't the right target audience. The target audience was professionals and people who are gonna use this for their computer. I'm sure that there have been thousands of movies that you've watched that have been edited on these computers or hundreds of movies that you've watched that have been edited on these computers. But the reality is, is these computers 
were built with a fatal flaw and that fatal flaw was you sold a pro computer with zero upgradability and that's just never going to work the only thing that's upgradable is technically the cpu but you could upgrade that up until the most recent cpu that they allowed the 12 core but that's it you can't upgrade the motherboard you can't upgrade anything else so you can't put in ddr4 ram into this thing you're stuck with the motherboard and you're stuck at lock at ddr3 and the same thing with the graphics cards. Technically, you could upgrade these, but you have to get the D700 graphics cards that they sold in their higher end models. So yeah, there were some technical upgrades, but they were capped. My current computer, there's no cap. It's whatever's the best is what I could put in my current computer. And I would consider myself a professional enough. So I couldn't risk spending three or $4,000 to stay within Mac OS just to be able to have a computer that's going to get out of date in not that long. There was a timetable on this, whereas my computer, when I bought it, there was never a timetable. It was, I bought it at the time, I'm still using the, the Ryzen 7 3700X, and originally it had a 5600 XT, but I've upgraded that graphics card, technically a downgrade in terms of performance, but upgraded it for the NVIDIA CUDA cores, and I've, I've added 16 gigabytes of RAM, and in the future, probably in the next couple years, I'm gonna upgrade that CPU to a Ryzen 9 5900X, and I'm gonna upgrade the motherboard if I wanted to, and then I can upgrade the RAM, and then I can upgrade the SSD and all that stuff, whereas this computer was locked in. It, it is what it is, it's beautiful, it's the best looking computer that anybody's ever designed, and everybody hated it. A lot of the hate was unfounded, it was, a lot of the hate was by people who could never even afford one of these things, so I think that's kind of funny. But I think that at the end of the day, what Apple was trying to do, I mean, Look at that. that, that's incredible. I mean, that is, they, they, they really thought about every experience. When you, when you move the computer, the back of this lights up. This is a remarkable computer and it's the most beautiful computer ever designed. If you have an alternative, let me know. I'll, I'll look at it. You're probably wrong, but I think this is the best looking computer that's ever been made. The reality is, is the target audience was wrong. And the target audience was everyday consumers that were gonna have it for seven, eight years, never worry about upgrading and then just buy a new one. I think that actually would have sold probably better. But at the end of the day, Apple tried something, they failed, but you can appreciate the fact that they made a beautiful computer. And that's it. It's not powerful. <laughs> it's it's not great price performance, but it's beautiful. And that's enough. So I will see you guys in the next video. I'm going to upgrade this thing 12 core with an eGPU. And we're going to see how it holds up against uh, modern day computing, basically against the Ryzen 7 3700X. And then I'm going to use it for a week after that in another video. And I look forward to doing that and seeing just how this thing still holds up if it's something that's still capable in 2023. Thank you guys for watching the video. I will see you in the next one. Peace out.